Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm here to do my May wrap up part one. In this video I'll be talking about the books that I read in the first two weeks of the month. Um, but before I jump into that, I do want to say sorry for not posting a video last week, but also kind of sorry not sorry. Work and life has been ridiculous for the past two weeks. And last week I had to sort of fill in for people in places and it just making a video just was not going to happen. I like recorded footage of a discussion I wanted to do and there was just no way I was going to be able to edit that into a coherent video. So I just like did not post anything and I didn't even say anything about not posting anything. So it's very likely none of you had any idea. I do like to post on here once a week on Fridays if that wasn't already clear. And I was a little sad that I couldn't do it last week, but I know that like, you know, it's normal. I have like a full-time job and other obligations outside of that and it won't always happen and taking one week off doesn't hurt anybody. So yes, anyways, I'm here to talk about the books that I read in the first two weeks of the month. Um, I finished four books so far and man, it's been a weird reading month. Basically all of the books that I have to talk about today were basically like 3.5 star books for me. <laughs> Which again isn't bad, um, but it's also just like not great and it's also just sort of weird that all of them are falling into this one specific star rating range. I've just been in like a weird headspace lately. I think again just been really busy and my brain is kind of exhausted so there's a very good chance that some of you guys love some of these books. Actually I know for a fact that some of you guys love some of these books and I personally didn't love them but didn't hate them either. But anyways let's just get into the books. I'm rambling. I'm still very tired. So <laughs> so yes the first book that I finished is Eleanor Elephant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This is one that was all the rage here on booktube last and I was kind of excited to read this one because I know this was on a lot of people's favorite books of the year list last year. So yes I liked it. I didn't love it. This book is super super readable though which is something I really appreciated. I think I read through this in like two days maybe three days because the writing style in here is just very I don't know how to explain it other than easy like you get sucked into the story and it makes you want to keep turning the pages. I believe the chapters in here are really short as well so that keeps you motivated and that keeps you going through the story. But I should probably give you a synopsis in case you haven't heard of this yet. <laughs> so in this story you are following this character named Eleanor Oliphant who lives a very like secluded life. She's probably in her mid to late 20s I want to say. She works at this office job. She's not really friends with her co-workers. She doesn't really talk to them very much. She lives by herself and she sort of gives off this attitude of like she's completely fine. Like she has her routines, she has her schedule, things like that. But you do realize pretty early on that something's just slightly a little bit off. And then she ends up becoming friends with one of the guys who works at the company. And it's sort of just like following her in her life as she sort of realizes that she's not completely fine and sort of like how things, I don't want to say fall apart, but things sort of occur. And then she has to deal with certain situations in her life. Um, and you also learn a little bit about like her backstory and things that happen to her in the past and how that has impacted the way that she currently lives because Eleanor Oliphant is not a normal person so to speak. Like she's very blunt and she's very honest and you know like I said she doesn't really have any friends or anything like that so you can tell like the way that she talks to people and about people and things like that are all just a little bit off um, from how like typically people converse with each other and so like all of that sort of adds up into the way that she lives her life. So yeah this book was again very readable very interesting um there are parts of this that like were very very touching to me and there were parts of it that are kind of eye rolly in my opinion like some of the situations that happen in here felt like too simple or like felt too well mapped out if that makes any sense. Like her friendship with the guy that she works with seems a little bit too easy almost and the way things sort of roll forward um, without getting into spo spoilers seems just again very neatly placed. So it's hard for me to like really really love this book because I could tell sort of like the moral lining behind this book. That always rubs me the wrong way in books. I like this book and I like that it's written and I like that it explores complicated topics and it explores things even just like about like depression and going to therapy and stuff like that. Like I always appreciate it when books tackle topics like that and make it seem okay to not okay to have depression but sort of like recognize that 
people have depression and going to therapy is normal and a good thing for you and things like that. So for that aspect, and also like I enjoyed the friendships and the relationships that Eleanor Oliphant has in here and sort of like the journey that she goes on overall but it does feel very like after school especially to me so that's just a book that I can never really super duper love but yeah like I said really readable parts of it are very heartwarming and I would recommend it if you are looking for something sort of lighter and has sort of like a happier ending to it almost. All right the next book that I finished was The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. This is another one that has been extremely hyped just in the world in general. It's already been like picked up to be made into I think a mini series on HBO starring Amy Adams. So yeah this one has definitely been fast-tracked quite a bit. So in this story you are following this character named Anna Fox who is agoraphobic. She basically lives alone in her house, very rarely leaves her house, and she spends the majority of her time like drinking a lot and spying on her neighbors. Um, this is very much sort of like an homage to Rear Window and all of those sort of Alfred Hitchcock ask movies. So Anna Fox gets some new neighbors and she ends up meeting the family that lives in this house and then she sees something in her neighbor's window occur and it's all about whether or not this event actually occurred because again Anna Fox is agoraphobic. She doesn't leave her house and also she drinks a lot so there are all of these questions about what is actually going on in this situation. So yeah like I said liked it good page turner. Um, I found it to be a little bit predictable. I think going into this book like I knew it was like an unreliable narrator situation and so like while I was reading the book I basically came up with like maybe five scenarios in my head. I'm like okay these are basically all of the possibilities that could happen here and I wasn't wrong. <laughs> like it doesn't hit every single one of those possibilities but if something occurred in this book I basically saw it coming ahead of time. So nothing in here really felt like a surprise but there are some interesting twists and turns in here. I have a feeling that this is going to be a really good miniseries adaptation because I think that as like a TV show or as a movie or something along those lines like this could be really really well done. But for me personally just reading the book it just felt pretty standard nothing amazing nothing terrible so yeah it just it just was okay for me I don't not recommend it <laughs> and I don't like super highly endorse it either if the premise sounds interesting to you I would say check it out but it's not one that is going to like make my favorites list by any means but I definitely will be watching the adaptation because again like I said I feel like this is going to be one where like the adaptation could potentially be better than the book so we'll see. All right next what I finished was Macbeth by Joe Nesba. Um, so this is part of the Hogarth Shakespeare retelling series and I have had no interest in picking up any of the other Shakespeare retellings. I mean I know some people like them but none of them really like triggered anything in me that made it feel really urgent in coming out. But when I heard about this one I was like holy crap I need to read that one right away. Like this one just came out a couple of weeks ago and I was the person who reserved it before I was even out because I wanted to read it as soon as possible. So yes this is obviously a retelling of Macbeth but it's told as a 1970s crime story. It takes place in this like industrial town. Macbeth is the head of the SWAT team. Duncan is the chief of police and Lady Macbeth runs a casino in town and Hecate I really should learn how to say that character's name because I've said that talked about this book multiple places and I always mess that up. Um, anyways he is like a drug lord in the town and things like that. Yeah I liked it. I didn't love it but I liked it. I am someone who is aware of the story of Macbeth. Like I have read the play. I've seen adaptations before. So I went into this knowing the general structure of what was going to go down and this book to me was just a really fun experience because it was interesting to see sort of how Joe Nesba puts all of these characters into this setting and seeing how the plot unfolds. Even though I knew like characters A, B, and C were going to die at some point, seeing exactly how it turns out was really interesting to me. Are there spoilers for Macbeth? I mean I'm just gonna pretend like there are because why not? This book is like hundreds of years old. I mean not this specific one but the story of Macbeth anyways. Like to me personally the interesting part of Macbeth is watching how Macbeth goes from the beginning of the book to the end of the book and seeing his character change and evolve and seeing how he does or does not deal with his guilt, how he does or does not view the world, and seeing sort of the other characters in relation to that. The reason why I didn't love this book are for a couple of reasons. One, I think that this is just a little bit too long. Um, I think it's almost 500 pages and there 
came a point where I, I was just like, I just want to know how it's going to end. I think that Lady Macbeth is done a disservice in this book. In my opinion, I, maybe it's just me, I think that Lady Macbeth is kind of the most interesting character in the story of Macbeth, like the original Macbeth. And so anytime there's a Macbeth retelling or adaptation or anything like that, I very much pay attention to how Lady Macbeth is portrayed. And while she is an interesting character in this book, I feel like she isn't given as much space. And so I think I just wanted more Lady Macbeth more than anything else. This is also a book that's very like action heavy in the beginning, action heavy at the end, and the middle is all character development. And so for me personally, I don't care about the action stuff at all. Like to me, the character stuff is really, really where I get into these books. So when I first started this book, I was like, oh man, I don't know if I'm going to like this book very much. And then I got into the meat of it and I was like, holy crap, I love this book. And then I got to the ending where it was all just action again. And I sort of fell out of love with it a little bit. Yeah, that's just like, again, personal preference thing. Um, there are a lot of people on like Amazon and Goodreads who are rating this book low because they're like, oh, this is not like a Joe Nesbo book at all. And that is 100% the case. Like it is dark and it is gritty, but it's not at all like Joe Nesba's other books. So don't go into it expecting that. Like this is very much like a dark, gritty detective novel more than a Joe Nesba book, which is slightly more twisty and plot heavy and things like that. So yeah, if you're a fan of Joe Nesba, I don't necessarily think there's like a clear parallel there. Although personally, I did love The Snowman and I do love this one as well. But again, I'm very much a character person. So a book with good character development will always grab me. So yeah, I think that if you like Macbeth, I think that you'll like this adaptation a lot. But it is like a denser, slower book. So go into it knowing that. All right. And the final book that I have finished so far this month is Kill Him and Leave by James McBride. The subtitle to this is Searching for James Brown and the American Soul. So this was a really interesting reading experience for me for a number of reasons. First of all, I didn't realize how tiny this book was. When I kept seeing it in bookstores in hardcover format, it seemed like a longer book. But then I started reading it and this book is super dense, full of information. And I really enjoyed it, but I didn't like super love it. Like again, it was a three and a half star book for me, which again, it means I really liked it, but I didn't like super love it. So if you aren't aware, this is a nonfiction book about James Brown. Also, it's a book about the United States and the way that we treat musicians and the way that people are viewed in the world, especially celebrities. Um, this was fascinating to me a lot of times because like I don't have super vast knowledge of James Brown outside of like the things that occurred to him in the late 80s, early 90s, or late 80s through the 90s. And that was basically like the lowest point in his life. So I knew about all of that stuff. And I knew less about what he was actually like, like a, as a human being, and even how he was viewed at the height of his era. So there is a lot of really interesting information in here in terms of like how generous he was and how much he tried to like always present a good version of himself to the public. Like they talk about in here how after shows he would basically be under a blow dryer for hours afterwards so that way he would like always be well presented because he would get so like sweaty and gross and things like that. So like anytime he was seen in public he wanted to be seen in the best possible light and but also like he was terrible at dealing with people and he was very stubborn and had a very specific way of doing things and yeah it was just really fascinating to see sort of how the world viewed James Brown and, and then James McBride sort of does this really interesting thing where he contrasts that with talking to people who actually knew James Brown and how they viewed him and using all of those pieces to put together the puzzle of James Brown. It was also really interesting reading this book recently just because of all of the things that are happening now with Kanye West. And I'm not going to make parallels between James Brown and Kanye West, but I also feel like you could kind of make parallels between James Brown and Kanye West. But yeah, it was just a really interesting experience because like James Brown also like kind of supported Richard Nixon and he got like so much crap for that. And so like reading about that and then seeing, you know, everything happening in the news with Kanye West and Donald Trump and just everything else Kanye West does and sort of seeing how people talk about celebrities and seeing how we want people to fit into these very neat but narrow boxes all the time, especially when they're celebrities and knowing that everyone is complicated, everyone has layers, everyone has a lot of different reasons for doing the things that they do. And I'm not like justifying anything that Kanye West does, but I think that a lot of times we talk about celebrities, especially when they are acting out or acting in a way that could be said to be acting out. Um, we're very quick to 
judge people and to put them in a certain way and really everyone is more complicated than that. So yeah, for that reason alone, I felt like this book was worth picking up because it provided some really interesting parallels to just the way the public talks about celebrities and musicians and especially like black men um, who are these artistic creative type of people and how they may do things different than everyone else and that is automatically categorized as a bad thing when really there are reasons a lot of times behind those things and again that doesn't justify what they choose to do but at least it gives an explanation so anyways yeah, I like this book. I, it wasn't great for me because I think a lot of times James McBride goes off on slight tangents and sometimes I enjoyed those tangents and sometimes I didn't. But overall, this was a really interesting book to read and I really like how James McBride sort of intertwines the stories of not just James Brown, but the people in James Brown's Brown's life as well as things happening around the country uh, during the period that James Brown was alive. So this isn't like a super, super comprehensive bi biography by any means, but I think it's a very accurate portrait of the life that James Brown lived. So yeah, if you've had any interest in this at all, I would say pick it up. Again, it's relatively short, but it is dense. So don't expect this to be like a one day read or anything like that, unless you are a really quick reader. But yeah, this took me like a week to read, even though it's like less than 300 pages, just because there's so much information in here. But I found it really interesting. So yes. All right. So that is everything I have finished so far this month. I'm in the middle of a bunch of different stuff. But again, I haven't been talking about the things I've been currently reading out in public very much. Sometimes I'll Instagram about it, but I've been in such a brain space, <laughs> just that motion in brain space. That's all I need to say uh, that I keep like picking stuff up and putting them down and not completing a lot of things just because my head's not in the place to complete those things. So yes, I will be back in two weeks for sure to do my May wrap up. That's all I have to talk about in this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts were on them. Um, or if you have any questions about any of these books, feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well as always. Um, otherwise, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.